You're listening to the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Show. We're going to keep you up to date and current in all sports. We'll make sure you're aware of everything in corporate and enterprise business. And most of all, we'll share with you how to make a little more money as we cover the NBA, the NFL, and Major League Baseball. You're going to have to figure out how you're going to treat the players because the players are just not coming down there for the growth of Caitlin Clark. All right, They're, they're pros, so you got, you got to put that in consideration. Sky can't help but be better next year. I'm not sure there will be, it'll be a heavy competition. The new coach has a lot of positivity. Yes, he does. I think that the past season will set them back. I expect they can make the playoffs, but I pick it up, pick them up for a seventh year unless I, they can pick up some value caliber players. All right, that's great. Franks, you nailed it. Let me tell you why Franks nailed it. All right. Because you got Witherspoon was a coach, right? But you got a coach coming in, okay, Tyler Marsh, right? I mean, the guy's a magnet. He's a player magnet, right? Here's, here's the first quality he has that I that that is a rarity, okay, first of all, in men, right? I mean, I work on it every day. I don't think I can even get there, right? Because I, I get too too much anxiety, get too excited when I'm coaching the game, how things are supposed to go. But he listens, right? He listens, right? That That is the most valuable asset. That's better than coaching, right? Because you got to look at that, all right? Well, Christy side still have the job. If she was able to listen to her players or did they run in and get a disconnect right because when you get a disconnect okay that's when things get tough right so you had a disconnect between christy side and caitlin clark right so now you got stephanie white that one there see for some reason they haven't been through the fire together right so you can't really sit back and tell me how great okay how great okay that Stephanie White's going to be till you go down 0-2 in a series. You got to go win the next three games, right? That that's the fire, and you can't really judge a coach on winning because here here's my here's my intangible. Nobody talks about. See, here's how I judge coaches on what they can and cannot do. I judge them on the last five minutes of the game. The game's even, right? You got five minutes to go. Who's going to execute it out? Who's going to be able to take that game in the last five minutes? I want you to look back and say how many games did the lead. Did the fever lose in the last five minutes of the game? Now you got to turn that around, and now you got to say to yourself, what's the plus figure, right? What's the plus figure for the Indiana fever? You hired Stephanie White. Are you telling me Stephanie White's bringing 10 more wins? 10 more wins? Is that what you're telling me? Because that's the way that's the way you're approaching this, that Stephanie White, okay, is that much better than Christie's side. So Stephanie White is going to bring 10 more wins just by her appearance in Indiana, right? That's what you're saying. If it doesn't happen that way, because Christy Sides was on that trajectory, like her or not, that they were moving in the right direction. Now you move that out. You got who you want. Now, when it doesn't work, okay, you got to be prepared to, to hold that together. If it does work, you're, you're, you made the best move. But don't think Chicago, okay? Chicago's got a different plan. Okay, they got a different plan. And that's why I tell you, when you got the coach is represented by Clutch, who do you think he wants to play for? Clutch players, right? You got to look at Rob Polinka. Okay, if you don't know who Rob Polinka is, which is the general manager, Rob Polinka has made more trades than anybody probably in the history of the WNBA. I mean, the history of the NBA with the Lakers, right? So you think about that. So you think how much movement that you're going to have. And when you got the MVP is signed with Clutch, you know what that tells me? You could call it money, Mike, conspiracy, or whatever. That tells me Asia, Asia Wilson going to be playing in Chicago, right? So you got Angel Reese and Angel Wilson, how they've been building and been mentoring and all this. And you got Gabby Williams coming back saying, hey, you know what? This is the deal. They did me bad. Well, you know what? They heard that, right? They heard what Gabby, they heard what Gabby Williams said. My owner, Michael Alter, he heard that, right? And you got D-Wade and you got Chuck. And they, they, they changing the client image. That's right. The client image of the Chicago Sky. What are they doing by changing that client image and saying, if you come to the Chicago Sky, okay, we're going to be able to take care of you. We're going to be able to manage you. We're going to be able to put you in positions with brands, okay, because you're not going to outdo Chicago. Indiana is a small market. Chicago is a big market, right? So what, well, how does that work? Well, you make more money. Okay, playing a seven-game championship series 
between L.A. and Chicago, okay? You understand that? Or playing against Minnesota, okay, and Indiana. You don't make money there. That's not how you make money in the league when Minnesota plays Indiana, right? You don't make money. You make money in this league when Chicago plays New York, all right? That's when you get the national media. Everybody's got your attention, right? So you're not going to be able to outdo. You're, you, you can win. Now, you can win, but don't think you're going to outdo these big markets, right? Because at the end of the day, that's not going to happen. All right, so, Franks, what's going on? You're right, hard to say, because the roster isn't completed. Yeah, yeah, you don't have any players. So, hiring a coach with no players, right? So, it, it, you got to ask yourself, how many people want to come play in the WNBA want to come play for Stephanie White? That's the question, right? Because at the end of the day, then Kelly doesn't have to work as hard because all these players in the WNBA want to come play for her. All right, so you should get some Connecticut Sun players, but we can't do that, right? Because the Connecticut Sun and the Indiana Fever are too toxic. So you don't want any of those players, right? You're blocking yourself, right? You're blocking yourself out of the game. You can't, you can't hold one team accountable and say we can't use any of those players, right? Because at the end of the day, your list, the only way you're going to get good, the only way the Indiana Fever is going to get better, Okay, they got to have a bigger applicant pool of free agents that want to come play for them, right? And, and, and at the end of the day, it's not like the NBA because you're not negotiating money, right? So you, you got one offer on the table, and the NBA guy says, hey, man, we're going to pay you $8 million a year, $10 million. That's a small number in the NBA now. But you got another team willing to pay them $20 million. Well, with the WNBA and the hard cap and the way everything it is, you, it, it's no advantage, right? You buy somebody out and say, come over here and play, right? So at the end of the day, with the shakeup and the Raiders and Mark Davis, everything else. So at the end of the day, you know what? Just you make the trade. Now, here's what happens: the trade doesn't have to be a great trade, right? You say, well, what do you want? I'll give you this player for that player. That's what you traded it for, right? So you got you got to realize. But just think what they would be like next year if Mabry didn't go to the Suns. Yeah, I bet she wouldn't mind Tyler as a coach. Yeah, you know what? You're right. You're right. You're right. But Mabry, uh, uh, and that's a good point, Jess. But here's the deal. Now, here's what, here's what the Indiana Fever got to think about, right? Because you're talking about your type of player. So I got to respect the Indiana Fever, and I got to respect the Indiana Fever fans. Let me tell you why. Why wouldn't the Indiana Fever go after Mabry, right? Because Mabry fits your bill, right? But because Mabry, now here's the deal. This is what I want to ask the fans, right? You can come back at me as hard as you want because this is what it's about. And there is no gatekeeper here. So whatever you say is going to go right to the league office, right? So if you notice, the language I give you and the language they use is pretty similar, right? So at the end of the day, there's no gatekeeper. But would the Indiana Fever not sign Mabry because she did the Carrington Act? Or would the Indiana Fever welcome Mabry, right? Because she was part of that skit and all that and teasing and Carrington and all. See, because you're going to block yourself out the league. So, okay, so you don't want the Shields. You don't want Mabry. There's only 12 teams in the league, guys. There's 12. Going to be 15, I think. Going to move it up. But, God, there ain't that many teams. So, pretty soon, you're recycling players, and events are going to happen, but you can't block that and say, well, I don't want Mabry because Mabry could help the Indiana Fever, right? Can't help the Connecticut Sun. The coach left. So, Stephanie White, there you go. That's the player, right? You got Kelly. There you go, right? There's your player, right? So, now you got Mabry. But is Kel since sides, okay, couldn't do it, but you got Stephanie White, you got Mabry, so maybe you should come over and play for Stephanie White, right, Zach? Now, are you going to accept that one? Now, is the Indiana Fevers, are you going to accept Mabry? You're going to reject her, right? Okay, and like next year, if Mabry didn't go to the Suns, bet she wouldn't mind Tyler coaching. Yeah, Tyler could coach, folks. The proof's in the pissing. When you got a resume of doing something, you, you can't come back and say the person is not good at it, right? It, it doesn't work like that. I mean, if I'm going to hire somebody, I'm going to say this is what they've done. I know they can win, right? And at the end of the day, I mean, I, I told you with Christy Sides, she's never done it, right? So you never put her in, never, never coach. Christy Sides in her wildest dream did not say, okay, I woke up my, my whole career. My goal is to coach two number one draft picks back to back. You're, it's impossible to win, right? Seriously, Sides wasn't good. She would throw players under the bus during media availability. Yeah, I didn't really get that. She, wouldn't make, she would make substitutions as Avi didn't work, and she seemingly had no idea when and where to call timeouts yep she forced her system on the players yep rather than coaching to the player's strength yep she refused to defend protect players when they were in obvious bad calls and dirty play yeah. hey frank man let me tell you you know what 
you know what? I I, I mean, how, how how folks, how good can you put it, right? All right, how good can you put it, right? That that what happened was the Indiana Fever, okay, because Lynn Dunn, okay, and the Indiana Fever are a family, the Simon family of what they do, right? But they're pulling the trigger on it now because they stepped in and said, okay, enough's enough. So they just said, Kelly, you know what? And, and, and listen, you got Kelly and the president, they're talking. Former president talking. She graciously said, okay, no problem, I'm out. All right, then he goes, Kelly's got to go over to Lynn Dunn. Well, Kelly and Lynn Dunn have had a million words together. Okay, we'll make you this, right? All right, but at the same time, when, when we were cutting that deal for Lynn Dunn, they forgot to tell Lynn Dunn that really, she really had to or didn't. She said, Lynn Dunn, I'm going to keep you, but I got to let, let Chrissy Sides go, right? So Kelly's having these hard conversations, and Lynn Dunn's got to shake her head and said, oh, my, I feel so bad for her, right? Because she didn't do anything wrong. She just got caught up in a whirlwind, right? Now, here's the deal. Now you got to force this. So, so Christy Sides, this is such a great explanation, Frank, because everything Frank's is talking about here, and I'll run through this again. This is what uh, Stephanie White's got to do, and you, you got to do this. But the question is, can she, right? Seriously, Sides wasn't good enough. She would throw the players under the bus during media availability. Okay, I don't expect uh, Stephanie White to do that. She would make substitutions. Ivory really didn't work. That's TBD. We haven't seen it yet. She seemingly had no idea when or where to call timeouts. That's TBD because we haven't seen Stephanie White coach under the scrutiny. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't watch 40 games of, uh, of the Connecticut Sun, right? Seemingly had no idea where to call timeouts. She forced her system on players. Believe it or not, Stephanie White is going to, put a system in, or Kelly's going to put a system in. They feel like they win. Whether you like it or not, that's the system. All right, we don't change for that. Rather than coaching to the player's strength, that's the dangerous thing. Now that's where Tyler comes in, right? Because Tyler is a development coach. And when you have a development coach, it's a lot different from a person that coaches and doesn't develop players. Because now your mentality while you're coaching, you know exactly what you want that player to do, right? So, and it works the same way. Um, with the intangibles for scouting or you're looking at players and you're, you're scouting them out and say, okay, can we sit here and get this player in the WNBA? It's kind of like Thibel, uh was with the 76ers, right? Me and Romar on the phone, we talking about, okay, I got Thibel, I got this player coming in, Mike. What do you think about this player? What do you think about that? And I'm sitting there, Romar, I said, look, I, I look at Thibel, played for Washington. He's going to be their best one, coach, because he's got so much athletic ability. Right, and, and and what Thibel did is made the NBA on defense, right? So you got to look at it. Half the American thinks you got to score, but you don't, right? But he made the NBA coming out of Washington, and there's nobody better, okay, than Lorenzo Romar picking players, right? He could go out there and pick a three-star player and make it to the NBA. That's why he put so many guys in the NBA. So a lot of this Stephanie White hasn't done, right? So her system in the Indiana Fever, now I know the system that she had in the Connecticut Sun, right? We watched that. We can go back and watch that 100 times. Now you're telling me we're going to go out here and play faster, okay? The, when you start playing faster, that means are you going to play faster on defense? Are you going to play faster in the continuity movement of the ball? Are you going to play faster going up and down the court? Are we going to designated break? Are we going to go faster with our inbounds plays, sideline plays, sets we run? I mean, what 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 does go faster mean, right? Because at the end of the day, that hasn't been defined. You've watched Stephanie White coach the Connecticut Sun with players the Indiana Fever don't have. You got to be cautious of that, right? And she's got to she's got to defend and protect. So here's what's going to happen: when she she's going to take some bullets. Stephanie White's going to take a lot of bullets because when, when Caitlin Clark plays bad, she's got to take accountability for that. Right. And she's got to keep taking the accountability till Caitlin plays great. Right. Because the longer you play in the league, OK, the longer they're going to get more tape on you. And when you get more tape on a player, they're going to defend you the way they know how to stop you. Right. And there's a lot of tape out there with Caitlin Clark, but she has to have the players. Right. You can't just bring the ball off the court, and swing off with a high post pick. Right. Because they're blitzing you out and running up uh, Boston up to the block because Boston doesn't handle the ball good enough. Right. So with Stephanie White, Stephanie White's looking at Alyssa Thomas handling that ball. Now Alyssa Thomas can get you the dribble drive penetration. Can do a lot of things off that, right? But you got to have that player to do that. And, th and that's the cautious thing about it, right? Okay, so it didn't work. Tried. I don't feel the need to roast her at this point. Yeah, I mean, Christy Sides, that is a bad spot to be. Wow, this is the miss, miss, most misinformed podcast I have listened to in a long time. Well, at least I appreciate you tuning in. He thinks by bringing up 
by hyping up an ignorant audience. Okay, there's a, there's a nice one. Now, when you say ignorant, now you got to ask yourself who's ignorant, right? Because you, you, this, this is stuff right here that gets radical, right? Because if, if I'm hyping up something, okay, at the end of the day, I don't have to hype it up. I'm just bringing in my world what I do on a daily basis, right? But I'm letting you inside. I'm telling you, I don't have a gatekeeper. So it, it is what it is. With nonsense, he will get the numbers. I could care less, folks. If you, 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 you don't want to, you want to know something about me? Go back and look at my tapes, right? Go back and look at Money Mike. All right, you know what? They're on me more about to do something that I don't even do. That's like and subscribe, right? You, you want to go back and look at my history? Do I ever pay you to like and subscribe? All uh, right, I mean they're pushing me to do that now because that's part of it. I, I don't follow that trend, right? I just put out the information where it is, and hey. When you digest Money Mike and you come to the Money Mike's podcast, you're going to get it uncut, right? I'm not going to sit on here and come back and tell you that attendance is bad. Attendance, attendance, and talk about the WNBA. I'm not going to do that, right? I'm not going to get on here and start bashing other WNBA players. That's not what I'm going to do, right? I want to be fair, equity, and look at the game in an objective view of what the women do, right? So at the end of the day, you know what? It is what it is, but, but guys, listen, I started out of print right? So you want to start talking about doing this. I'm, I'm covering high school football games for the Chico Enterprise record. And I'm out there getting good 600 line, 800 line stories. Got to send it down to the editor. Got to put it in. And you know what? God blessed me with all that work of doing it because I was just like a little sheep out there, right? But you know, the Enterprise record, we had Aaron Rodgers right out of here, Chico, California. What do you do? I go sports editor. He says, hey, you know what? We got a credential. Nobody's wanted to go. I said, I'll take that. Because I knew Aaron was going to go win the Super Bowl, right? So I had an opportunity to go down there, get on the Hall of Fame bus, right? But at the end of the day, I don't need to do a click. I'm talking real deal stuff. Now, it may not be the way you're getting it in Indiana, and it may not be the way you're getting it in the media, because the media, I'll tell you something with the WNBA, they really give you a lot of softballs, right? Because I, I You're listening to the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Show. We're going to keep you up to date and current in all sports. We'll make sure you're aware of everything in corporate and enterprise business. And most of all, we'll share with you how to make a little more money as we cover the NBA, the NFL, and Major League Baseball. This is the Money Mike Syndicated Radio Podcast. That's a good WNBA fans speak reactions and comments. I'm giving it to you my way. You got a right to give it to me your way. I always tell you it's my opinion, but if it turns the truth, I've given you the facts. So to the Indiana Fever and WNBA fans, it's your opinion. And if it turns to facts, then you're giving me the truth before it happens. But always remember this. All things are possible to the WNBA. And the WNBA is fantastic. And, of course, all things are possible to those who believe. We'll see you soon.